Gaius Salistius Crispus, usually anglicized as Sallust, 86 c. 35 BC, was a Roman historian, politician, and novus homo from an Italian plebeian family. Sallust was born at Amaternum in the country of the Sabines and was a popularis, an opponent of the old Roman aristocracy, throughout his career, and later a partisan of Julius Caesar. Sallust is the earliest known Roman historian with surviving works to his name, of which Catalan's War about the conspiracy in 63 BC of L. Sergius Catalina, the Jugurthine War about Rome's war against the Numidian king Jugurtha from 111 to 105 BC, and the histories of which only fragments survive are still extant. Sallust was primarily influenced by the Greek historian Thucydides and amassed great and ill-gotten wealth from his governorship of Africa. Life and career Sallust was probably born in Amaternum in central Italy, though Eduard Schwartz takes the view that Sallust's birthplace was Rome. His birth date is calculated from the report of Jerome's Chronicon. But Ronald Syme suggests that Jerome's date has to be adjusted because of his carelessness, and suggests 87 BC as a more correct date. However, Sallust's birth is widely dated at 86 BC, and the Kleine Pauli Encyclopedia takes 1 October 86 BC as the birthdate. Michael Grant cautiously offers 80s BC. There is no information about Sallust's parents or family, except for Tacitus's mention of his sister. The Sallusti were a provincial noble family of Sabine origin. They belonged to the equestrian order and had full Roman citizenship. During the Social War Sallust's parents hid in Rome, because Amaternum was under threat of siege by rebelling Italic tribes. Because of this Sallust could have been raised in Rome he received a very good education. After an ill-spent youth, Sallust entered public life and may have won election as quaestor in 55 BC. However, there is no conclusive evidence about this, and some scholars suppose that Sallust did not become a quaestor. The practice of violating the cursus honorum was common in the last years of the Republic. He became a tribune of the plebs in 52 BC, the year in which the followers of Milo killed Clodius in a street brawl. Sallust then supported the prosecution of Milo. Sallust, Titus Munatius Plancus and Quintus Pompeius Rufus also tried to blame Cicero, one of the leaders of the senator's opposition to the triumvirate, for his support of Milo. Syme suggests that Sallust, because of his position in Milo's trial, did not originally support Caesar. T. Momsen states that Sallust acted in Pompey's interests. According to Momsen, Pompey was preparing to install his own dictatorship. According to one inscription, some Sallustius with unclear prenomen was a proquaster in Syria in 50 BC under Marcus Calpurnius Bibulus. Momsen identified this Sallustius with Sallust the historian, though T. R. S. Broughton argued that Sallust the historian could not have been an assistant to Julius Caesar's adversary. From the beginning of his public career, Sallust operated as a decided partisan of Julius Caesar, to whom he owed such political advancement as he attained. In 50 BC, the censor Appius Claudius Pulcher removed him from the Senate on the grounds of gross immorality, probably really because of his opposition to Milo and Cicero. In the following year, perhaps through Caesar's influence, he was reinstated. During the civil war of 49–45 BC Sallust acted as Caesar's partisan, but his role was not significant, so his name is not mentioned in the dictator's commentary de Bello Civili. It was reported that Sallust dined with Caesar, Hirtius, Opius, Balbus and Sulpicius Rufus on the night after Caesar's famous crossing of the Rubicon River into Italy on 10 January. In 49 BC Sallust was moved to Illyricum and probably commanded at least one legion there after the failure of Publius Cornelius Dolabella and Gaius Antonius. This campaign was unsuccessful. In 48 BC he was probably made quaestor by Caesar to re-enter the Senate. However, the last statement is based on the invective against Sallust ascribed to Cicero, which is probably a later forgery. In late summer 47 BC a group of soldiers rebelled near Rome, demanding their discharge and payment for service. Sallust, as praetor designatus, with several other senators, was sent to persuade the soldiers, but the rebels killed two senators, and Sallust narrowly escaped death. In 46 BC, he served as a praetor and accompanied Caesar in his African campaign, which ended in the decisive defeat of the remains of the Pompeian War Party at Thapsus. Sallust did not participate in military operations directly, but he commanded several ships and organized supply through the Kirkenna Islands. As a reward for his services, Sallust was appointed governor of the province of Africa Nova. 
It is not clear why, Sallust was not a skilled general, and the province was militarily significant, with three legions deployed there. Moreover, his successors as governor were experienced military men. However, Sallust successfully managed the organization of supply and transportation, and these qualities could have determined Caesar's choice. As governor he committed such oppression and extortion that only Caesar's influence enabled him to escape condemnation. On his return to Rome he purchased and began laying out in great splendor the famous gardens on the Quirinal known as the Horti Salustiani or Gardens of Sallust. These gardens would later belong to the emperors. Sallust then retired from public life and devoted himself to historical literature, and further developed his gardens, upon which he spent much of his accumulated wealth. According to Hieronymus Stridonensis, Sallust later became the second husband of Cicero's ex-wife Terentia. However prominent scholars of Roman prosopography such as Ronald Syme refute this as a legend. Works <laughs> <laughs> Sallust's account of the Catalan conspiracy de Coniuratione Catalina or Bellum Catalina and of the Jugurthine War Bellum Jugurthinum have come down to us complete, together with fragments of his larger and most important work Historiae, a history of Rome from 78 to 67 BC, intended as a continuation of Cornelius Cicena's work. Topic. The Conspiracy of Catalan The Conspiracy of Catalan Sallust's first published work, contains the history of the memorable year 63 BC. Sallust adopts the usually accepted view of Catalan, and describes him as the deliberate foe of law, order and morality, and does not give a comprehensive explanation of his views and intentions. Catalan had supported the party of Sulla, whom Sallust had opposed. Momsen has suggested that Sallust particularly wished to clear his patron Caesar of all complicity in the conspiracy. In writing about the conspiracy of Catalan, Sallust's tone, style, and descriptions of aristocratic behavior show that he was deeply troubled by the moral decline of Rome. While he inveighs against Catalan's depraved character and vicious actions, he does not fail to state that the man had many noble traits, indeed all that a Roman man needed to succeed. In particular, Sallust shows Catalan as deeply courageous in his final battle. This subject gave Sallust the opportunity to show off his rhetoric at the expense of the old Roman aristocracy, whose degeneracy he delighted to paint in the blackest colors. The work probably was written between 44 and 40 BC, or between 42 and 41 BC according to Der Kleine Pauli. However, Louis Mackay proposed a different dating. According to him, the conspiracy was prepared by Sallust in 50 BC as a political pamphlet, but was not published. After the Civil War, Sallust reviewed and finally published it. The work does not have any traces of personal experience, and the most common explanation is Sallust's military service during this period. The main source for this work is De Consolatu Suo by Cicero. Topic: <laughs> Jugurthine War. Sallust's Jugurthine War is a monograph recording the war against Jugurtha in Numidia from c. 112 BC to 105 BC. Its true value lies in the introduction of Marius and Sulla to the Roman political scene and the beginning of their rivalry. Sallust's time as governor of Africa Nova ought to have let the author develop a solid geographical and ethnographical background to the war, however, this is not evident in the monograph, despite a diversion on the subject, because Sallust's priority in the Jugurthine War, as with the Catalan conspiracy, is to use history as a vehicle for his judgment on the slow destruction of Roman morality and politics. Other works The extant fragments of the histories some discovered in 1886 show sufficiently well the political partisan, who took a keen pleasure in describing the reaction against Sulla's policy and legislation after the dictator's death. Historians regret the loss of the work, as it must have thrown much light on a very eventful period, embracing the war against Sertorius died 72 BC, the campaigns of Lucullus against Mithridates v of Pontus 75 BC, and the victories of Pompey in the east 66 BC. Two letters, Dwey Epistolae de Republica Ordinanda, letters of political counsel and advice addressed to Caesar, and an attack upon Cicero invectiva or declamatio in Ciceronum, frequently attributed to Sallust, are thought by modern scholars to have come from the pen of a rhetorician of the 1st century AD, along with a counter-invective attributed to Cicero. 
At one time Marcus Porcius Latra was considered a candidate for the authorship of the pseudo salistian corpus, but this view is no longer commonly held. <laughs> style The style of works written by Sallust was well known in Rome. It differs from the writings of his contemporaries—Caesar and especially Cicero. It is characterized by brevity and by the use of rare words and turns of phrase. As a result, his works are very far from the conversational Latin of his time, consider his use of archaic words. According to Suetonius, Lucius Ateus Pretextatus philologus helped Sallust to collect them. Ronald Syme suggests that Sallust's choice of style and even particular words was influenced by his antipathy to Cicero, his rival, but also one of the trendsetters in Latin literature in the first century BC. The conspiracy of Catalan reflects many features of style that were developed in his later works. Sallust avoids common words from public speeches of contemporary Roman political orators, such as Honestas, Humanitas, Consensus. In several cases he uses rare forms of well-known words, for example, lubido instead of libido, maximum instead of maximum, the conjunction quo in place of more common ut. He also uses the less common endings air er instead of common erunt in the third person plural in the perfect indicative, and as instead of s in the accusative plural for third declension masculine or feminine adjectives and nouns. Some words used by Sallust, for example, anticapere, portatio, incruntus, incelebratus, incuriosus, are not known in other writings before him. They are believed to be either neologisms or intentional revivals of archaic words. Sallust also often uses antithesis, alliterations and chiasmus. Significance <inaudible> 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 On the whole, antiquity looked favorably on Sallust as a historian. Tacitus speaks highly of him Annals, e. and Quintilian does not hesitate to put him on a level with Thucydides, and declares that he is a greater historian than Livy. Marshall joins the praise, "...Sallust, according to the judgment of the learned, will rank as the prince of Roman historiographers." His books were sometimes used by authors of the 1st and 2nd centuries AD, especially after imitations of archaic style gained popularity. Among those who borrowed information from his works were Silius Italicus, Lucan, Plutarch, and Ammianus Marcellinus. Fronto used ancient words collected by Sallust to provide archaic coloring for his works. In the 2nd century AD Zenobius translated his works into ancient Greek, other opinions were also present. For example, Gaius Asenius Pollio criticized Sallust's addiction to archaic words and his unusual grammatical features. Aulus Gellius saved Pollio's unfavorable statement about Sallust's style. According to him, Sallust once used the word transgressus meaning generally, passage by foot, for a platoon which crossed the sea the usual word for this type of crossing was transfertatio. Though Quintilian has a generally favorable opinion of Sallust, he disparages several features of his style. For though a diffuse irrelevance is tedious, the omission of what is necessary is positively dangerous. We must therefore avoid even the famous terseness of Sallust though in his case of course it is a merit, and shun all abruptness of speech, since a style which presents no difficulty to a leisurely reader, flies past a hearer and will not stay to be looked at again. Sallust struck out practically a new line in literature for himself, his predecessors had been little better than mere dry-as-dust chroniclers, but he endeavored to explain the connection and meaning of events and successfully delineated character. The contrast between his early life and the high moral tone he adopted in his writings has frequently made him a subject of reproach, but history gives no reason why he should not have reformed. In any case, his knowledge of his own former weaknesses may have led him to take a pessimistic view of the morality of his fellow men, and to judge them severely. He took as his model Thucydides, whom he imitated in his truthfulness and impartiality, in the introduction of philosophical reflections and speeches, and in the brevity of his style, sometimes bordering upon obscurity. During the late antiquity and early Middle Ages his works retained their popularity, and some influential early Christian theologists Marcus Minucius Felix and Augustine of Hippo knew his writings well. In the Middle Ages Sallust's works were often used in schools to teach Latin. His brief style influenced, among others, Widukind of Corvi and Wipo of Burgundy. In the 13th century Sallust's passage on the expansion of the Roman Republic Cat, 7, was cited and interpreted by theologian Thomas Aquinas and scholar Brunetto Latini. 
During the late Middle Ages and Renaissance Sallusts works began to influence political thought in Italy. Among many scholars and historians interested in Sallust, the most notable are Leonardo Bruni, Coluccio Salutati and Niccolò Machiavelli. Petrarch also praised Sallust highly, though he primarily appreciated his style and moralization. During the French Wars of Religion, De Cognoratione Catalina became widely known as a tutorial on disclosing conspiracies. Among his admirers in England were Thomas More, Alexander Barclay and Thomas Eliot. Justus Lipsius marked Sallust as the second most notable Roman historian after Tacitus. Nietzsche credits Sallust in Twilight of the Idols for his epigrammatic style. My sense of style, for the epigram as a style, was awakened almost instantly when I came into contact with Sallust, and praises him for being compact, severe, with as much substance as possible, a cold sarcasm against beautiful words and beautiful sentiments. Henrik Ibsen's first play was Catalan, based on Sallust's story. Manuscripts Several manuscripts of his work survived due to his popularity in antiquity and the Middle Ages. Manuscripts of his writings are usually divided into two groups, mutila mutilated and integri whole, undamaged. The classification is based on the existence of the lacuna gap between 103.2 and 112.3 of the Jugurthine War. The lacuna exists in the mutila scrolls, while integri manuscripts have the text there. The most ancient scrolls which survive are the Codex Parisinus 16024 and Codex Parisinus 16025, known as P and A, respectively. They were created in the 9th century, and both belong to the Mutilla group. Both these scrolls include only Catalan and Jugurtha, while some other Mutilla manuscripts also include Invective and Cicero's response. The oldest Integri scrolls were created in the 11th century AD. The probability that all these scrolls came from one or more ancient manuscripts is debated. There is also a unique scroll Codex Vaticanus 3864, known as V. It includes only speeches and letters from Catalan, Jugurtha and histories. The creator of this manuscript changed the original word order and replaced archaisms with more familiar words. The V scroll also includes two anonymous letters to Caesar probably from Sallust, but their authenticity is debated see above. Several fragments of Sallust's works survived in papyri of the 2nd to 4th centuries AD. Many ancient authors cited Sallust, and sometimes their citations of histories are the only source for reconstruction of this work. But the significance of these citations for the reconstruction is uncertain, because occasionally the authors cited Sallust from memory, and some distortions were possible. Translations The Conspiracy of Cateline and the Worry of Jugurth trans. Thomas Haywood, 1608. New York, Ams Press, 1967 among other modern printings. Loeb Classical Library, Vol. 116, Trans. J. C. Rolfe. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Hupp, 1921. Catalan's War, The Jugurthine War, Histories, Trans. A. J. Woodman. London, Penguin, 2007 ISBN 0140449485. Page XXVII, When Sallust Died, Probably in 35, Catalan's Conspiracy, The Jugurthine War, Histories, Trans. William W. Batstone. Oxford, OUP, 2010 ISBN 9780192823458. Topic see also List of historians Roman historiography Unity makes strength animus in consolendo liber Topic References Topic Further reading AILI, H. The Prose Rhythm of Sallust and Livy. Stockholm, Almquist and Wixel, 1979. Chisholm, H., ed. Sallust. Encyclopædia Britannica, 11th ed. Cambridge University Press, 1911. Drummond, A. Law, Politics and Power, Sallust and the Execution of the Catalinarian Conspirators. Stuttgart, Franz Steiner, 1995. Earl, D.C. The Political Thought of Sallust. Amsterdam, Hackert, 1961. Funari, R., ed. Corpus Dei Papyri Storici Greci e Latini. Parti B. Storici Latini. 1. Autori Noti. Volume 2 Keys Sallustius Crispus. 
Pisa and Rome, Fabrizio Serra Editor, 2008. Hartswick, K. J. The Gardens of Sallust. A Changing Landscape. Austin, University of Texas Press, 2004. Latte, K. Sallust. Leipzig, Teubner, 1935. Lempriere, J. A. Classical Dictionary. London, Caudale and Davies, 1820, p. 683. Oniga, R. Salustio e Litnografia. Pisa, Giardini, 1995. Osmond, P. J. Princeps Historiae Romanae, Sallust in Renaissance Political Thought, Memoirs of the American Academy in Rome 40 1995, pp. 101–143. Renahan, R. A Traditional Pattern of Imitation in Sallust and His Sources, Classical Philology 71 1976, pp. 97–105. Scanlon, T. Spes Frustrata, A Reading of Sallust. Heidelberg, Winter, 1987. Scanlon, T. The Influence of Thucydides on Sallust. Heidelberg, Winter, 1980. Syme, R. Sallust. Berkeley, University of California Press, 1964. Woodman, A. J. Rhetoric in Classical Historiography. London, Kroom Helm, 1988. Topic external links Latin with English translation at Lacuscursius J. C. Rolf, 1921, Bellum Catalina Bellum Jigurthinum Invectiva in Ciceronum Uncertain Authorship, Sometimes Attributed to Sallust Oratio ad Caesarim Uncertain Authorship Works by Sallust at Project Gutenberg Schmitz and Zumpt, 1848, Bellum Catalina Bellum Jigurthinum at the Perseus Project Watson, 1899, Bellum Catalina Bellum Jigurthinum at Attalus. Org Fragmenta Historiarum Translation of Selected Fragments Fragmenta Historiarum Latin text of all surviving fragments Latin only At Latin Library unknown edition Bellum Catalina Bellum Jigurthinum Fragmenta Historiarum Epistolae ad Caesarim Invectiva in Ciceronem works by Sallust at Project Gutenberg Works by or about Sallust at Internet Archive Works by Sallust at LibriVox Public Domain Audiobooks Works by Sallust at Open Library